We're back with you on the Dr. Nandy Show, and today I'm checking with the experts to separate the myths from the truths about prostate cancer. For many men, the tough question is this, right? Do the benefits of prostate cancer treatment really outweigh the risk? Big question, and Dr. Simpa Salami is here from the University of Michigan to talk about life after treatment. Welcome, Dr. Salami. Thank you. Thanks for Such having Such a me. pleasure to have you. So side effects, you know, people, a lot of people may know, but what are the side effects of, of treatment from prostate cancer, specifically surgery and radiation we talk about? Uh, following surgical removal of the prostate, the side effects are mainly are urinary incontinence, meaning the inability to control one's urine, uh, as well as erectile dysfunction. And then after radiation, uh, some of the side effects may include like burning while urinating, having to go to go to the bathroom very often or going to the bathroom at night and in the long term there's the risk of secondary cancers and uh, the structures around the prostate like the bladder or the rectum. But I'm sure you hear a lot of my patients like, doc don't even touch me if I cannot do it and if I can't urinate well forget about it, let me die of cancer. But really that's not a fair statement anymore is it? We actually have good treatments now and skilled surgeons like Dr. Montgomery um, and perhaps others that, that, can, that can really not give those side effects. Maybe you can speak to that because lots of folks don't are afraid of treatment because of that. Uh, truly, we do have um, innovation in, in different technology that has improved significantly the outcomes after uh, treatment for prostate cancer. Uh, surgery, uh, in particular, we have uh, bilateral nerve sparing surgery that can help men to preserve their erections. Um, and also with uh, radiation, uh, they have uh, different strategies now that can help them to really focus uh, the treatment directly to the prostate while uh, preventing collateral damage, if you will. Yeah. They used to blast you before, so those of you are watching and following along, they'd blast the whole area. Yeah. Now they're specifying it, so if you're following along, it spares all the other stuff. So as a gastroenterologist, I used to see all the time you would see radiation proctitis, you know, from people getting prostate cancer, and it's, it's less and less. But I don't want to create a panacea. It's still not impossible. You have to make that decision individually with, with, uh, with your doctor to find out if, it's, if, if the risks and the benefits, you know, if the benefits really outweigh the risks. So I think it's important. You know, for, for patients, uh, doctor, that, that, are, that are going through treatment, what's the life expectancy that you can expect? Let's say you successfully treat the prostate cancer. Uh, the good news here is that life expectancy or the survival after treatment for prostate cancer is very good if it is detected early. Uh, what kills patients with prostate cancer is metastasis. That is when the cancer has spread to other sites yes. like lymph nodes or bones, that's what really kills patients. So patients who have localized disease, meaning disease that is contained in the prostate, uh, have excellent survival more than 99% in five to 10 years after treatment. You know, there's only one number after 99, that's 100, right? So I'll tell you, I mean, he's given a, a great, great reason for those of you who are watching to get screened. And and, and, and really, do you think that men should continue to get screened? Because there's so many messages being put out, which I don't agree with, and people saying, I don't need to know. Do you think they should still get screened? I am a great proponent of uh, prostate cancer screening. My man! Yes! <laughs> uh, and the reason is, if you... And I think that the reason is if you pick it up early, then you can uh, treat it appropriately and uh, prevent death from, from metastatic disease. And, and, and so here's a, here's a story, right? With almost every tumor, especially also prostate cancer, if you, if you can get it when it hasn't gone too far, you have a much better chance of getting rid of it. And if you, if you talk about colon cancer, same story, right? Getting screened with colonoscopies. If you talk about breast cancer, same story, right? This is no different. I, I just wish that more of us of those you're watching, and, and he's being a proponent, I am, but I want all of you out there to spread that message to the people that, that you elect in Congress and Senate to say, listen, I was watching the Dr. Nandy show, and I heard Dr. Salami give a number, 99%. So can we change it so we can get screened appropriately? I think it's such an important, um, important conversation to have with your doctor, but also advocate, because we're not gonna change this with just he and I talking about it. Super important information. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. I love, you know, I have, I have always admired my I, I childhood friends from Nigeria. When I found out you were Nigerian, I was ecstatic. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. And yeah, we'll take a break. Up next, a frank conversation with a prostate cancer survivor and his wife. Super important information. Please don't go away. And it is something that I learned through this process that doesn't happen. When I went for your uh, yearly checkup and physical, and they do the blood work, uh, but they don't do a PSA unless you ask for it.